Hey everybody, I'm going to be talking about time-restricted eating and whether or not it works. So there's a new study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It was published about a week ago. It compared time-restricted eating, compared time-restricted eating to, and plus calorie restriction to just calorie restriction by itself. So, so if you guys are on the video version of this, you guys can see in this abstract. Time restricted eating plus daily calorie restriction versus calorie restriction in itself. Okay, no difference between the two, and it's and, and there's a sl slight, this is not statistically significant difference, but this is kind of a fluke of, of the data. If you look at the absolute change in body weight to time trend data, you see that there's these uh, the different groups of crisscrossing and weight. They're basically at the same weight throughout the entire last six months of the trial, and then at 12 months, there's a slight increase in the daily calorie restriction group. Okay. Which then drives the trend in the in the change in body weight, but it's still it's not statistically significant. But it's a fluke. It's a statistical fluke, as you guys can see if you're on the YouTube video. Okay. Okay, but 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 people like Andrew Huberman right here, this tweet, um, he's desperately looking for ways to negate this study to say that it's not a good study, right? Because. Uh, Huberman has been pushing time restricted eating for the last two years. Many of his friends push time restricted eating. He believes in time restricted eating. He actually eats in a time restricted manner. And he doesn't want to believe this study is true. And, uh, because it would make him look bad. And also, it, it, it's like, it kind of hurts to think that you've been, like, adhering to something. You've been working hard to adhere to something, but it doesn't actually work. It kind of hurts personally. There's an existential, like, sunk cost thing. Like, ugh. What, what am I stupid? And, and, and it's not an indication that you're stupid. I've done all sorts of things that don't work. But I was just experimenting, you know, personally. So for me, I don't care whenever I'm wrong, but other people sometimes do. So there's a whole group of people who are trying to, like, push back and pretend that this is a bad study. One of the ways that they do it is by, like, hacking this data. They look at this data, like, oh, look, you're 12 months. Well, there's a difference in 12 months. Therefore, you know, time restricted eating works. And Jason Fung did that. David Ludwig did that. Nick Norwitz did that. A lot of people do that. And Ronald Patrick has done that. I think Sachin Panda did that. They all do that. Everybody does that. But if you look at the absolute changes of body weight, you look at the time trend data, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. It's a completely ridiculous uh, thing, but cool, but whatever. Like, but then the other, the other claim is that there's a three hour eating window difference between the two groups. So this is in China. So there's an 11 hour eating window for the the calorie restricted group, because that's like the normal eating window for a calorie restricted group in China, for anybody in China. Once they're calorie restricting, they're in an 11-hour window eating window. And then the time restricted eating group is only eight hours. So it's only a three-hour difference in eating windows. And they're saying, okay, therefore, there's no difference. Um, you know, therefore, there's not a big enough difference in the eating windows to really see the effect. And that's why you didn't see an effect in this trial. Well, that's negated by this other, this other study that was also published in... Um, 2020, but it's, it wasn't published. It was just published as an abstracted obesity. We got a obesity conference from the obesity society at the obesity society. For whatever reason, the authors chose not to publish this paper. My assumption is because they didn't want to, they don't want to, they weren't happy with the results. Okay. So there's no meaningful difference in, in metabolism or weight loss in the two groups over the course of like, uh, how long, how long is this study? Fourteen weeks, right? It's the same design. It's time restricted eating plus calorie restriction compared to calorie restriction, and there's no difference. Okay, but in this case, this is in America, so the, the feeding window of the control group, the calorie restriction group, was like 15 hours, and the feeding window of the time restricted eating group was like eight hours. So still, even though you change it to no to no to a large difference in feeding windows, there's no um, that criticism is invalid. That it's an eating window difference. It's not. That's not the reason the New England Journal of Medicine study showed no effect. It's something else. Okay. So both of these have shown the same effect. If you compare time restricted eating plus calorie restriction to to just calorie restriction, you get no difference in, in weight loss. Now you do get in both groups, uh, bo both the time restricted eating plus the calorie restriction, and in the calorie restriction eating group, you get a reduction in weight. Right. 
but it's no, there's no difference. Why is, why is that? Well, um, let's talk about that in a second. But before we do that, let's talk about one last study that's going to really help us to understand a little bit more about this. So this is a study published in JAMA Internal Medicine by Dylan Lowe and colleagues. This is for Dylan Lowe's PhD project. This is with Ethan Weiss. And they published this study showing there's no difference uh, in time restricted eating versus consistent meal timing. Okay? No difference in time restricted eating versus consistent meal timing in terms of the weight loss. Right? Uh, consistent meal timing is not a time restricted eating window. It's just like I pay attention to eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know exactly what I'm eating, I'm eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then I do that every day. So I just pay attention to when I'm eating and I, I lose weight. And I lose the same weight as if I do time restricted eating on average. So each person in two groups, same, same weight on average. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's cool. Okay, so what, what is the take home from these three studies? First off, the, if the feeding window doesn't matter, the difference between the feeding window and the control group and the experimental group doesn't matter. It doesn't somehow bring out an effect. It doesn't bring out an effect. Time restricted eating doesn't work. It doesn't work. But what, but what is the take home? Why do we think time restricted eating works? Well, because we had single arm studies. Single arm studies where we just looked at baseline. Okay, I'm going to start doing time restricted eating, take baseline, and see how much weight I lose. People lose weight. When you start them on time restricted eating, they lose weight immediately. They lose weight immediately in these single arm studies when you don't have a control group. They lose weight. But if you have an act, what's called an active control group. So in all these studies, these three studies, I just mentioned, we had an active control group. We had a consistent meal timing group. And we had a, a calorie restriction group. We compared that to the time restricted eating group. Okay. When an active control group, you don't see any difference. Why? Why don't you see any additional benefit of time restricted eating on top of calorie restriction compared to calorie restriction? Why don't you see any difference in time restricted eating versus consistent meal time? It's very simple. Because even though you're changing the feeding window in the time restricted eating group versus consistent meal timing, you're not changing the window in consistent meal timing. You're still getting an effect in the consistent meal timing. What that shows is that simply paying attention to when you're eating is the thing that's driving the effect in time restricted eating. It's not the, 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 the shortness of the window or whatever, or the difference in the window size. It's not. Because we already know that from the other two studies, right? From the from the abstract and then the New England Journal of Medicine study. We know that. It doesn't matter how long how much difference there is in the eating window, right? All that you need is to start paying attention to when you're eating or if you look at the journal in JAMA Internal Medicine study or in the in the time restricted eating plus calorie restriction study versus calorie restriction studies, those two studies, you need to pay attention to how much you're eating. So once you pay attention to what you're eating or how much or when you're eating, once you start paying attention to your eating behavior, you start to lose weight. So and 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 no and time restricted eating does not add anything additional. So what is time restricted eating? Time restricting eating is a modality that has you start to pay attention to when you're eating and to what you're eating and how you're eating. It is a modality that makes you mindful about your food intake. That is the mechanism through which time restricted eating works. According to interpretation, if you compile these three studies together, that is the, that is the mechanism. That's why when you have this active control groups where you start paying attention to how much you're eating or when you're eating, you get no difference between time restricted eating and, and, and and these active control groups, even though you're losing weight in both groups. And that's why when you look at the other studies where there's been single arm trials, you see a great decrease in weight in the time restricted eating group. That's why you're getting a decrease in weight. It's not due to the time restricted eating itself. It's due to simply paying attention to when you're eating or how much you're eating. That's what time restricted eating is doing for you, according to interpretation of these studies. To pull up these studies together and you think thoughtfully about what they're showing and what the active control groups indicate. What, what else did I cover? Did I get everything? Yeah, I mean, I got everything. Another thing that would be useful is like watching my video on It Worked For Me. 
because that will really help you to understand why there's some variations between the different groups and the different studies. Like, or sorry, there are variations between the different individuals in response to the different interventions and the different studies. And it also explains why some people like swear by time restricting and other people don't. It may have nothing to do with actually time restricting or differences in responses and the responses. It may have to do with other factors. You should look at that video. But yeah, that's that is the take home. We don't need these these additional uh, 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 panels of scientists to talk about this. We don't need like people to just keep talking, yammering about the study because the study's negative. Time restricted eating doesn't work. Time restricted eating does not work. It doesn't work. There's three studies now that are very strong, designed very completely different ways. It doesn't work in any of these studies. It doesn't produce meaningful weight loss. If you compare it to semaglutide or the other GLP-1 receptor agonists, time-restricted eating is a joke. Nobody's going to care about time-restricted eating in 10 years because people are going to be taking semaglutide instead, which actually is an effective weight loss intervention. Time-restricted eating is not. Time-restricted eating is, is a good way to get you started to thinking about when you're eating and how much you're eating, and it will cause weight loss. But its contribution to weight loss is not anything to do with the feeding window. It has something to do with you simply paying attention. That said... Their circadian benefit of September Street eating, that is to say, eating more of your calories earlier in the day, will benefit you in terms of your abdominal adiposity. It will benefit you in terms of your insulin resistance, et cetera, et cetera. It will make your metabolic functioning marginally better. There's a modest improvement, for sure, in terms of circadian meal timing. If you eat more of your calories earlier in the day, you're going to be better off. There's no doubt. But it's not in terms of your weight loss, right? It's a circadian effect. So you're going to optimize your metabolism by eating more calories earlier in the day. That's what you need to do. And there's some indication in animal models that having longer fasting windows might be a good thing. That's not necessarily in terms of like over one day. Maybe good to like fast for several days. But then you've got downsides including muscle aspects to muscle loss and all sorts of other things. We don't really understand how this works in humans. And I would not recommend fasting, although there may be an effect somewhere. I think probably what we really need to do is just take rapamycin. That's kind of an aside. So there may be some effects independent of um, – independent of weight loss that are good for people for time restricted eating. However, we don't know if that, that that's actually true. There could actually just be no effect whatsoever because human and mouse metabolism is very different. Mouse metabolism is like one day is like worth one week. So if you fast mice for a day, you're fasting for like a week or a month even. Literally, it's like for a month. It's like a 40 day, it's like a 40 fold difference. You're fasting for a month if you're fasting for a day. When you compare that to a human, like, yeah, if you fast you for a month, maybe. Does everyone want to start fasting for a month every couple of years or every few years? Maybe you'll get like a longevity uh, benefit from that. That's the equivalent in terms of humans. So we, how, do, how does that translate in terms of time restricted eating? Nobody knows. So, and nobody knows that time restricted eating actually causes this effect. It's a longevity benefit. It does in mice again, but it may not in humans because human metabolism is very different. It's very much slower. Mice lose like 5 or 10% of their body weight in a day of fasting. Humans lose like 1%. It's because it's not the same. You fast mice for three days, they die. You fast humans for three days, it's fine. Three days of human fasting is nothing versus three days of mouse fasting. It's a totally different phenomenon. So does this longevity effect actually apply to time restricted eating? Probably not. Probably not. It's probably much longer fasts. So the longevity benefits are probably not real. The metabolic benefits of circadian meal time and eating more calories earlier in the day probably is real. And that's it, man. That's it, my men. This is... This is the proper interpretation of these three studies. You don't. So if you liked this uh, breakdown of these studies of, of time restricted eating not working in these three different studies, uh, you know, hit like, subscribe, share this, let people know. Whenever people talk about time restricted eating, like kind of link them, link them this particular video. It's an important breakdown of the different false claims about this particular study and about studies about time restricted eating. Share this stuff on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. My handle there is Kevin in Basque, A B I N N B A S S. Please tag me if you do share it. Uh, check me out on my website, thedietwars.com slash support dash me is a place where you can support me. And then, of course, just the website for other blog articles, etc. Patreon is going to be Kevin in Basque, A B I N B A S S, where you can ask me questions if you're one of my patrons. Please send me a message on Twitter or Instagram if you're one of my patrons, and please. Give me a phone call if you're, you know, once every month if you're one of my top uh, top tier patrons. That would be awesome, and I can help you out with your different issues related to some of the information that I'm going to be talking about in this video note. Uh, 
yeah, so hope you enjoyed the podcast uh, slash video. Please let me know what you think about it. All feedback is helpful. All feedback is much appreciated. I use it to improve upon things and make things better. And that is the uh, final word, I believe, on Timer Shift 80. It is a done deal. Let's sink the fork into it. Peace out.